Hi everyone, welcome back to the introductory Python tutorials for image processing. In the last video, we got a quick introduction to autoencoders, and these are basically convolutional networks where you have an encoder path and a decoder path. An encoder path is progressively bringing your image size down to a smaller size, and then the decoder is decoding that uh, smaller vector into your original image. So in fact, let's go ahead and have a quick look at it. So you have an encoder path on the left-hand side and a decoder path on the right-hand side that's uh, kind of symmetric to your encoder path, right? I mean, uh, in this graphic, I literally flipped this image and then concatenated or added, I should say, to this left-hand side. So my image on the left-hand side is reconstructed as image on the right-hand side. <clears throat> And in the last video, we left off by asking a question, can we trick this? Can we use the autoencoders for semantic segmentation? I use the term trick because autoencoders typically mean you have an input image and you're reconstructing the same input image by going through this architecture. Now, instead of using the same input as your expected output, what if we provide a segmentation mask as the expected output? Can we teach an autoencoder to learn this mapping from your original input to a segmented output? If that's the case, then we can do our semantic segmentation using our nice architecture that we are displaying here. Okay, so let's jump to some code to literally do this experiment by providing our model, our autoencoder, that we have used already in the last video, the same one, instead of providing our X and Y to be the same, let's provide our X and Y to be different, X as our input image and Y as the segmented mask. And let's see if that, that is acceptable. So let's jump into the code. Okay, as usual, I'm going to share the code with you, so don't worry too much about writing it down right now. One quick note, I am using uh, GPU, on Colab, thanks to Google, we get this for free. So please go ahead and use it responsibly. Do not just th do a bunch of, uh, do not hog the GPU resources because everyone needs it. Okay, now uh, the first few lines, I explained it again in the last video, we are just importing the libraries, required libraries, and uh, going down the encoder path, we are going to use convolutional layers and more importantly, max pooling. So we are going from a larger size slowly down and to reconstruct it back in this example, we're going to use upsampling 2D, although you can use convolutional 2D transpose, which is exact opposite of Conv2D, like the name suggests. Okay, I'll talk about that in uh, uh, the next video, uh, just to give you some clarity on what the difference is between these two. And we're going to use sequential uh, method to create our model. We have been using that uh, anyhow in Keras. Okay, so let's define our size to be 512. Let's define a larger image and uh, let's go ahead and import. I'm going to load a sandstone image that I showed you earlier as part of the presentation. And the size of that image is 512 by 512 by three. And let me expand, expand the dimensions by one just to make it ready to go into our neural network. So one image of size 512 by 512 by three. And now comes uh, the mask part, right? So we are tricking our autoencoder. Last, in the last video, we just said, okay, that's my image and my X is imagery, my Y is imagery, okay? So do the mapping one-on-one. -on -one. But right now we are going to load our mask and then get to the same shape. Uh, right now we have 512 by 512 by three, right? And that's pretty much the same size, right? 512 by 512 by three, they need to match up. Okay, so now we are going to expand the dimensions of our mask array again, to get it to one 512 by 512 by three. And finally, I am dividing both my image and mask by 255. Why am I dividing my mask by 255? Because my mask has values uh, ranging from zero to 255. And by doing this, uh, well, my mask has uh, different regions. Let's close this. My mask has different regions uh, of values that come fall between zero to 255. By dividing those by 255, I'm just bringing everything to values below zero to one. That's pretty much it. Same for images. If your masks are already uh, like zero, one, two, three, then you don't have to do anything. Even in this case, if I don't divide by 255, nothing wrong you need to divide your image area because that's what you're training on and the mask area is just what we are trying to predict, 
okay so but i'm doing this just for the fun of it okay let's go ahead and plot our image and corresponding mask there you go so that's my input image i thought i put c mask is equal to oh wrong one <laughs> sorry about that i had to do that right there i don't like my image to be in pseudo color there you go that looks uh, realistic now right so this is my image this can be think of this as a uh, xrm image x-ray microscope or a ct uh, tomography one slice out of this tomography data set or this can be an electron microscope image but it doesn't matter it can be even light microscope image it's just an image and or even a satellite image right an image and corresponding mask okay so far so good now let's define our auto encoder this is exactly the same what we have done in the last video right so 64 uh, filters 128 to 56 and progressively symmetrically going back down with an output of three channels why three channels because my uh, label in this case is uh, RGB image with three channels if it is just a grayscale image 0 1 to 3 pixels then that output would be one right there okay now uh, yeah so we have that and next we just need to fit the model remember in our last video we did image array and image array now let's go ahead and do image array and mask array okay and let's uh, train it for 500 epochs if the model doesn't uh, converge, let's try a few more. But let's go ahead and train this for 500 epochs and see what we get. Again, as usual, I'll pause the video until this is done so we can see if we need more training. If so, I'll pause again. But let's give this a chance. Uh, in the last video, we did 1000 epochs. Right now, we're doing 500. So uh, once it starts, it should be relatively quick. But, uh, but let me pause the video and then continue. Okay, so this is done and giving us pretty decent accuracy actually. Looks like it's saturated about 93% right there. So even if I continue, I'm not sure if I'll get any better than this. You see the last few of these epochs I should have plotted, but that seems to be uh, saturated right there. So let's go ahead and predict on our model. And first of all, let's go ahead and see the maximum value right there, one. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, my prediction, because again, we normalized everything to value zero and one. That's just a quick check, uh, a sanity check that I added over there. So let's go ahead and plot it. So let's plot our input. There you go. So this is my input image and this is the original mask and this is my predicted mask. That's not bad at all, right? That looks very good. So the answer to our question, can we use autoencoders for semantic segmentation is maybe. Why do I say maybe if this looks so great? Well, even when we reconstructed our image in the last video, we saw that we lost some resolution. And you can see that here. You see very nice sharp edges, a lot of, like if you look at the details in this region, yeah? You see, look at that small void right there that shows up as like some blurred region. Look at this void right here. Look at the same thing over here. I mean, on first look, it looks like we are getting very good segmentation. Yeah, of course, I agree with you. This is not an easy sample uh, to segment. This is great. But look at all the rounded edges. And this is, we are using the same image and same mask, and we are predicting on the same image, so we should get the same mask. But if you expand this, uh, sorry, if you extend this to a whole bunch of images and you're training it and you give it an unknown image, how does the segmentation perform? Well, it actually performs in a decent way except it's limited by the resolution why because we are going again from a large image all the way to a small image and then back to the large image yeah so the results are fuzzy Be again because we already talked about this we lose resolution of feature maps as we go from initial encoder layer to the bridge layer and back to the final. We completely lose the spatial resolution. We are getting great information about features as we go down. So the question is, what if we can attach features from the encoders, right? So we have the encoders, the first layer, the second layer, the third layer, they have great spatial information because the image size didn't change by a lot. But as we go down, the image size is changing. So what if we can get the features from the first layers and add them to the final layers. That's exactly what a unit is. And in the next video, let's talk about what a unit is. So let me just uh, you know, leave it right here and 
pick up the discussion in the next video where we talk about UNIT. UNIT is an amazing architecture for biological image segmentation, but later on people found out that the same architecture works amazingly well for non-bio, like even satellite images and uh, uh, other. So when it comes to semantic segmentation, UNIT is what you need to be thinking of. Yeah, this is a great architecture. So stay tuned for the next video where we'll talk about uh, a little bit about UNIT and the video after that, we'll start implementing UNIT on different data sets, okay? So thank you guys again. Uh, please subscribe to this channel.